Those who have been to a ruined wedding. What happened? I've catered many weddings and there have been some memorable ones. Fights between guests, wedding cakes, falling over, red wine spilt on wedding dresses, the lot. The one I'll never forget. An all-day do. Small ceremony, a few close friends and family, and a big reception filled with a huge buffet. Every type of food you could imagine and a free bar, all in the same venue. They had booked and paid for 250 evening guests, but 30 turned up at most. My heart broke for this couple. A massive, beautiful converted barn. Loads of food and drinks, and great music, but no guests. At about 10 p.m., the venue was licensed until 11 p.m., the buffet food had barely been touched. The few people who were there ate, but had hardly made a dent, as it was planned for so many more. I asked the mother of the bride if she wanted me to cover and refrigerate the untouched food, so the new couple could take it home. And her response? Oh no, there's still a lot of people coming, was the most awkward I have felt in my life. No more guests showed. There was a flash of car headlights in the distance at about 10.30pm and the bride beamed when she thought it was latecomers arriving. But no, it was just taxis arriving to pick up the few who were there. It's the only event I have ever done where we didn't have to kick people out. At 11pm, the place was empty. In a nutshell, bride's parents paid for the day and the happy couple had zero control over their guest list. Her parents invited all of their friends to the evening function, but in reality it was just associates they wanted to flex on, resulting in no one giving a crap about an invite to a wedding party where they didn't know the bride or groom. It was basically just a networking event for the bride's parents. Parents really should just not give as much input or have as much influence for weddings. If these Reddit stories have taught me anything, it's that. Parents, despite popular belief in many cultures, do not always know best. They often act on their own selfish impulses just like the rest of people, because guess what? They're human too. I feel really bad for the couple whose wedding was essentially, uh, well, the reception was essentially ruined. Because, yeah... 30 people showing up over a guest list of 200? It's not a good ratio. We now have a Discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story 2. I've been to a few, but this one is the most, uh, soap opera-y. I did a dessert table for a terrible not wedding at my old country club once. As I'm setting up, people start shuffling in. Keep in mind, the actual ceremony is supposed to be going on at that moment, so nothing is fully set up. Couple is nowhere to be found. It felt more like a funeral than anything else just people talking quietly amongst themselves. I track down the wedding photographer since I know he'll probably have details, and find him chatting with a bridesmaid. Apparently the couple was super Christian slash conservative and young, like 1920. The groom got sent to a pray away the gay camp as a high schooler after getting caught dating his best friend. There for a year, he comes back and meets this girl and they decide to get married. Ran into the guy he got caught with like two months before the wedding and decides he misses their friendship. So they start hanging out again. As the wedding gets closer, he realizes, what the hell am I doing? And starts freaking out. And the night before the wedding goes to this guy's house, realizes he's still gay and wants to be with him. He calls the bride and she refuses to accept that he's not showing. So she goes through the whole mess of getting ready, takes pictures, goes to the venue, and he doesn't show up. You know, like he said he wouldn't. She loses her damn mind on speakerphone with him at the church, where everyone can hear while he's yelling, I'm gay, I like men, I love him, and my parents can't force me anymore. This isn't about you, and you'll thank me in the long run. I got to agree with our resident gay boy here. She absolutely will thank him in the long run. I can only imagine how terrible it would be to be married to someone who you think loves you, and then them all of a sudden being like, actually, no. You're not even in, like, the right category for me to love you. Sorry. Because let's be honest, it's gonna happen eventually. These kinds of things don't get bottled up for entire lives. At least not anymore, and not that that was ever healthy. Story 3. Groom got so drunk the night before, he couldn't make it to the altar at the ceremony. They still had the ceremony with only the bride and her party, plus one of the groomsmen, who apparently didn't get wasted. Everyone there was shaking their heads the entire time. The groom did make one singular appearance for a few seconds at the reception. He looked like a zombie and was wearing street clothes. And this was no trashy wedding. The bride was a professional dancer for a major label pop star. So that gives you an idea of the type of people that were in attendance. 
200 plus people at the ceremony alone, probably double that at the reception. They divorced within six months. I can't believe they made it six months. Something that starts like this is dead on arrival, let's be real. Story 4. I was outside for a smoke at the reception and saw the groom's dad sitting in the back of his SUV drinking Knob Creek from the bottle. I was friends with the groom's family and knew the father well, so I went up and asked him what was going on. We all knew the bride was an entitled, spoiled brat, but she cranked it up to 11 that night. Everything about the reception was wrong. The food, the centerpieces, the decor, the DJ, everything. Even though everything was exactly what she wanted. Not surprising, her whole extended family was a bunch of entitled spoiled brats too. So they all gladly jumped on the bandwagon. The groom's family was slipping out the nearest door while the bride's family was berating every single person they made eye contact with. I think the only reason dad was still there was just in case his son had an epiphany and ran for it. He was poised to play getaway driver. I ended up sitting with dad smoking cigars and drowning bourbon until it was over. No way in hell I was walking back into that crap show. My wife and their daughter were close friends, how we knew the family, and had a front row seat. Daughter was drunk as balls and ready to throw hands. Mom was too. Wife basically became their wrangler, with a couple other level-headed females associated with the groom's family to keep them from kicking the bride's butt. These are all upper-middle-class folks on both sides, by the way, not some redneck, mossy oak tuxedo affair. Wife was decidedly upset at me, but after I explained I was keeping dad company and giving him an outlet, she backed off. Definitely one of the more entertaining evenings I've experienced. Story 5. It didn't ruin the wedding or marriage, but it came close. An English guy marrying an Irish girl in Ireland. The wedding guests are comprised mostly of her family, including family from Northern Ireland, the nationalist Republican parts, and his English friends and family. The wedding part goes off fine, very romantic, nice ceremony. But then, at the reception, the time comes for speeches, specifically, the best man. The best man is a particularly red-faced Brexit-voting English man. He proceeds to make the most insensitive, offensive speech filled with jokes about recolonizing Ireland one woman at a time, and how the stag party had been a good Friday, but the hangover was so bad it led to a bloody Sunday. You get the idea. He wraps the speech up by making a comment about how these speeches have gone on so long that it's like the guests are on a hunger strike. Throughout all of this, the English groom and his friends and family were laughing. They thought it was hilarious. Her Irish family were all fuming. I was there as a plus one of one of the bride's cousins. It was aggressively awkward, and a lot of her cousins and uncles just refused to mingle with the groom's family at all. I'm no longer in touch with the guy who took me, so I don't know how the marriage is going. The bride was very kind, and despite his best man's speech, the groom seemed like a nice enough guy. Story 6. I was best man at my sister-in-law's wedding. Stepped in for the brother of the groom. That's another story entirely. For a whole year of planning, all the bride, sister-in-law, wanted was a dove release while they said handwritten vows to each other. Very small, non-denominational, most of the family are atheist anyway, wedding. Day arrives, early summer, and something is off with the bird handlers. They show up a bit late and are sourcing help from the wedding party to get everything in line. When the time comes to say their vows, I help the handler carry the chest with the doves in it, over to what is to be the altar where the bride and groom are standing. Vows are just about wrapping up and the handler gives me the signal to open the chest. I open it and see 20 to 30 dead doves in the crate. I immediately close it and try to limit who knows what happened. Too late. The look of horror on her face was all that was needed. We spent the next few hours trying to cheer everyone up, but by the end of the reception, the entire wedding party had organized and filed animal cruelty complaints on the handler. It was all anyone could focus on. That is definitely a wedding no one there will ever forget. Also, how does that happen? Why does the handler even show up at that point? Because from them acting weird, it was obvious that something was wrong, like they probably knew the doves were dead. So what was, what was the purpose here? Did the handler think, oh, maybe they're just sleeping, it'll be fine when I open the crate? No, the handler knew. Story 7. I went to a really weird wedding last year. The bridal party had different fancier meals than the guests and were drinking free champagne, while we had to pay for beer and wine with drink tickets, cash only, no ATM. There weren't enough tables to sit at, I guess the goal was to mingle and stand to eat, and there was definitely not enough food. People were hogging the buffet stations and going back for thirds before some people had eaten at all. The bride and groom, friend of my partner's, were really standoffish, and just took photos with their photographer all night. Then I guess a fight among the two families broke out in the parking lot. The cops were called, we decided to leave, order a pizza, and get drunk in a park. And when we went back to our hotel room, someone was passed out in our bed. Ah, New Jersey. 
Story 8. So, embarrassingly enough, I was dating this girl who asked me to go to her ex's wedding. We dated for a handful of months prior, and asking me to go to a wedding together felt like a serious commitment, so I accepted. Planned the week off work, and we went all out for this wedding. Half the time we were trying to enjoy our stay together, she was missing. Fast forward to the reception, and she comes up and makes a scene in the most utterly, mentally sick way, in front of children, the groom, the bride, absolutely everyone, and says out loud, I'm still in love with you. We literally have been screwing for the past two days since we've seen each other. She quickly gets escorted out. The bride is clearly upset and everyone goes about their business. But as soon as I leave, this woman that I fly two and a half hours with starts ruining the hall and everything else, getting so upset on her way out. It was so embarrassing. I figured she was telling the truth since she was missing this whole time. And I'm pretty sure that everyone during the whole thing assumed that this was too crazy to be real. It felt so weird and awkward. I felt a lot of my time was wasted and more frustration than I could imagine. But by the time I left, I was able to leave early, I felt a heavy burden being lifted. Definitely regret not seeing her mentality before, but when you work so much and try to date at the same time, you have very little time to get to know some people. Time sort of flies by and then it's been months. Fast forward a month or two later. She got together with the groom and I'm pretty sure she has no regrets about wasting my time. She probably doesn't even feel bad about using me or even ruining that man's marriage. That woman is seriously twisted. How can someone do that and have it work out? Like this woman was obviously going there with the plan to get back together with her ex, right? And it, and it worked. That should never work right? Going to someone's wedding to break them up with their fiancé and get together with them? Th that doesn't make any sense. On some level, I just have to respect this woman's gall. But yes, there is a 0% chance this works out to be a happy relationship. Story 9. Not exactly ruined, but a hilarious moment. Christian wedding where the pastor refused to say the phrase, you may now kiss the bride. The bride knew this going in, but insisted that he say it, and had convinced herself the pastor would change his mind and ultimately say the phrase. Well, he didn't say it at the end of the ceremony. Bride had a few drinks prior to walking down the aisle and proceeded to grab her new husband by the face and make out for what felt like a solid three minutes. At first, everyone was clapping and cheering for them, but eventually the clapping died down and we were all just left with two people hardcore making out in absolute silence, tongue and all, in front of 300 people. I was a groomsman, so I got to see the stunned reaction of the entire crowd. Her grandparents, and the older people especially, were incredibly uncomfortable. I am always baffled by what some people will do at weddings. Between, like, hardcore making out with tongue, and even more frisky stuff while in front of everyone, I just can't believe it. Some people are way too comfortable about that. I get it, like, intimate positivity, sure. But also, some level of shame is useful, I think. Just my opinion. Story 10. Was a caterer at a really expensive wedding overlooking Rockefeller Center during the holiday season. Two prominent New York Jewish families being bonded. Bride and groom got way too drunk and started physically fighting in front of everyone on the dance floor, while screaming in each other's faces. Like, the bride was full-on trying to throw punches and the groom was shoving her. The groom's mother was also pretty blasted and came back into the kitchen to blame us, the kitchen staff, for ruining her baby's big day because apparently one of the hors d'oeuvres came out a few minutes too late, and somehow this was to blame for them getting too drunk and starting a public fist fight. I actually had permission to dip early from that shift and was getting into the elevator right as the groom was screaming obscenities, and had to be held up slash back by multiple members of the wedding party. I had to try really hard not to laugh earlier when his mother screamed in my face how we should feel ashamed, and how she wasn't going to pay a penny, as though hiring a team of 15 back-end chefs, five upfront party chefs, two catering managers, and a team of wait staff was something you can totally pay for after the fact, after everyone already ate. I don't know what happened after I left, but I was pleased to leave when I did. And now, another story. I did some of the prep for George Soros's latest wedding, and while it wasn't ruined, there were a few mishaps that were hilarious. He imported a foreign team of chefs from the top Michelin-starred restaurant in Europe. They proceed to get frickin' hammered every night in NYC and could barely function the next day, or were at least nursing hangovers, and half asleep for the first few hours they were there every morning. They were back to normal by the second half of the day. This went on for weeks. Free vacation from Mr. Soros as far as they were concerned. I was a lowly kitchen hand and this big shot chef was nice to me though, so I thought he was rad. A lot of chefs are raging jerks and this guy patiently taught me how to break down Alaskan king crab when I admitted I had no experience with such a task. 
stealth edit. You would be surprised how many chefs function while drunk on the job as a regular modus operandi. We had a few chefs who got sent home and were well into the six-figure mark a few times while I was there. Like, work all day, drink all night, not go home, and come back to the kitchen at 6.30am and pass out in their offices. The Europeans didn't do this, though. They at least went home to their hotels before strolling in the next day. Alcoholism and other forms of drug abuse are real issues in that industry. Anyway, back to the story. Soros wanted all of the herbs to be fresh, so he actually had us buy an entire room full of potted herbs and edible plants that I had to rotate and water for weeks leading up to the event. None of that made it to the wedding despite the plants being in good condition. We gave them away to staff after the wedding. The funniest bit was that one of the main dishes was imported lobster tail that I personally had to help prep for hours on end, and the staff forgot to cook it. So at the last minute, the chef, the imported big shot who was hungover, decided that it was going to be served raw and that he was just going to play it off like it was his intention all along. Soros apparently complimented him on how he had never heard of that before, but it was absolutely great. And this guy was a culinary genius or something. The weddings of the super rich are incredibly wasteful. There was a team well north of 100 people for just one of the nights of Soros's bash. And that was just from our company. That's not including all the people who actually prepped the food before the day of the wedding. People like me who spent literally eight hours just breaking up Alaskan king crab with a cleaver while standing in a freezer. Story 11. My dad and stepmom's wedding was a crap show. For context, her family was terrible on both sides. Abusive father, neglectful alcoholic mother, and stepparents who didn't care about her much. And she basically ran to my father to get away from it all when she was 15. Baker problem was my dad was 26, also abusive and just a real freaking crap show of a person. On my father's side of things, he hated his mother and blamed everything wrong in his life on her, as he did to most women in his family, later doing it to my stepmom. So the wedding was doomed to be terrible. It started when my stepmom was walking down the aisle. She'd reconnected with her father in the last year and had recently been in a fight with her stepfather, so it was just her dad walking her. There was a branch in the way, outdoor wedding, but he pulled it out of the way for her. As she thanks him, he lets it go and it flings back into her face and literally collapses laughing. She awkwardly chuckles, no doubt knowing that he's going to get mad at her if she shows she's upset. And the day continues, but she's visibly unhappy. After the toasts, some people didn't drink the champagne that had been set out. The one thing she had asked of her mom was that she not drink. She was even given sparkling juice rather than champagne. So while stepmom is changing into a reception dress, her mom goes table to table pounding down all of the alcohol she can get her hands on. A cousin of mine who doesn't know what's happening starts chanting chug, 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 and stepmom walks back to her mom, downing the last one and denying everything. Cousin slips out of the tent once he realizes what's going on and leaves the two alone to argue. Stepmom comes out crying a few minutes later, goes back to her car, and doesn't come back for a good 20 minutes. While all of that is happening, Grandma pulls up and starts cursing out my dad for a ton of stuff, including marrying a kid, Stepmom was 25 at this point, who she hates, not letting her invite a friend to the wedding, and him owing her a bunch of money. Dad tells her to screw off and she leaves. Then my dad got mad at my stepmom for being gone for so long, accused her of either being a baby for crying or of lying and cheating on him. So she sat down on the fringes and tried not to cry and also remained visible to my dad for the next several hours. They may have been dating for 10 years, but the marriage only lasted 6 months. For anyone who's in a relationship that resembles anything what Opie just talked about, get out now. You cannot fix the person, it's just true. If people have issues this dramatic and are that controlling and, frankly, abusive, then it's not gonna work out. They are not worth your time. You're a great person, I just know it. Anyway, thank you for watching, and have a great rest of your day or night.